All right, guys, so we're out here starting a new project. This is gonna be pretty standard. It's just a basic broom finish exterior patio. Um, it's been cold up here in North Georgia. Uh, yesterday morning, it was four degrees, and come over here this morning early, the ground, the, the subgrade, and the the crusher run that was already in here was, uh, was very hard. We couldn't even drive any pins, so we went back over to our Airbnb that we stained the floor Put all the furniture back cleaned up and uh now it's about 48 50 degrees and it's still frozen so um we are gonna get this i'll, sh I'll get this thing turned around and show you guys what we got going on All right, so you got Aaron over there. He's raking gravel around, getting the gray good. Um, guys got this formed out here. So this is 10 foot out from the house. And this is 40 feet from that wall all the way down to this point here. And we're gonna run this thing straight over to that metal pin. It's five feet wide. A um, Couple things I wanna point out is we chipped out this concrete that was flowed way out right here. So we chipped all that out. Um, had to cut this back a little bit more because we're going two foot past the door and we have our basic half inch expansion up there It looks like they doubled it up. I have not been here, but they got it to where it's flush to this threshold So that way when we pour up to the top right here um, The concrete can't get locked in there and it can it allows it to move a little bit and then obviously you can't use that on this rock so uh, basically we switch over to this uh, this pink expansion and that's really the best thing you can do there's i haven't found another option if you guys have for rock that goes in and out for expansion um comment down below and let us know because we're always open to learn new stuff so um the guys are putting the gravel in and they have these all these temporary supports out here so they have these tent braces and we're going to be digging pier holes plumbing down from where those posts are straight down here and this is where we'll cut our tool joints and they'll be every eight feet but you can see they got this temporary supports up so we can pour this concrete and we'll keep you guys updated on on the process morning everybody it's about 7 30 a.m and it's about 30 degrees maybe 31 and we have concrete and a line pump on the way um i'm gonna flip this thing around so here's our patio formed. We got our pier holes dug where the posts are gonna go. We got the temporary supports up right now and um, got our fiber bar in here. The guys just uh, hung up the plastic, which we prefer to use. Um, another good trick is if you gotta wash this thing off, you can actually spray this with a heavy dilution of Dawn dish soap mixed with water and it, uh, no concrete will stick to it and you wash it off the next day. In this case, we're not gonna be washing it. This is all gonna be tool jointed, broom finish, and uh, then we'll seal it. So um, if you notice, you got some rocks up against that expansion. We had some that loosened up a little bit. Once again, it's been probably a week and a half since we've been here. Um, we, we are like clean freaks. People hire us to pour their flat work and not splatter their wall. So, um, that's pretty important to us. And uh, so yeah, everything's good to go. Got our rebar in here, got our tools unloaded, everything's staged. We've been here since seven, mud's at eight. We like to have plenty of time to get everything prepped. We're gonna tool joint this thing. So it's 40 feet from the wall down there where Aaron is out to this corner. And we're gonna cut this right off this corner and then tool joint this every 10 feet. And then our walkway going to that door is five feet. So we're gonna tool joint off of this corner concrete hates inside corners inside 90 degrees like this as the concrete shrinks and tightens it pulls against that wall and it always wants to crack on a 45 so another huge tip that took me some years to figure out is I would tool joint off of these and then I would wonder why I would still get cracking and what would happen is I realized that my tool joint the center of it may be over a little bit and it does no good so what you want to do is make sure your tool joint the middle of it is here or even just slightly past it so when it cracks off that inside it'll catch one of these joints 
most of the time you can't ever guarantee that but we have good good success with that so Shiloh's taping the threshold um, like I said got all our tools out proper preparation it's a huge thing so uh, we'll update you guys on the pour it's gonna get up to about 65 degrees today uh, right now it's close to 30 but uh, we went with uh, straight cement and uh, hot water and 1% non chloride accelerator so this stuff should kick but it's not gonna be in the 60s until later this afternoon my prediction is that we'll be uh, broomed and out of here by one but we'll see we'll let you guys know all right we got southern concrete materials we got masperin pumping got this line pump ran down here got about halfway poured out and screeded Aaron's getting all his clothes off he's getting hot so we're pouring on a pretty tight slump um, I would say that's a good good five maybe five and a half but I'd say closer to a five inch slump um, we want this stuff to set up so you can see the guys got it screeded uh, just using a regular two by four and uh, I'm just magging the edges as they screed and Brittany's using to come along and rake behind them and um, we're trying to mag this top edge the best we can because we know we can't get out there and mess with it again until we get on knee board so um, you want to try and lay that down as best as possible the rebar is getting pulled up as we go and just lift up on it throughout the process and we're getting there all right so we started about 8 p.m maybe 755 and it is 835 so it took us 35 40 minutes to get this poured out and screeded like I said it's colder right now it's probably warmed up to 34 something like that um, but we did pour this on a tighter slump you can see where I kind of sprinkled some mud and some holes but um, <clears throat> we screeded this with a 10 foot board all the way down and then uh, we turned right here with one man on a five foot and worked our way out and we're about to put a bull float on it it is tightening up pretty quick which is what we want uh, we're gonna bull float it cut some joints do a nice broom finish on this thing may do a cut in border out here um, eight inches to a foot wide just so those posts sit on there it allows us some expansion if it wants to crack off of that uh, but we'll see um, not necessarily necessary if that's a phrase but uh looks good has some character and it does have some functionality to it for these posts so uh, Brittany's down there magging the edges I'm gonna bull float here soon and we'll get an edge and join it and update y'all okay everything is bull floated magged real nice personally I like to wait to edge um, I even like to wait to bull float I don't do not like to bull float when it's real soft in my opinion it just pushes down and um, Kind of takes the point of your screed away the flatness of your screed so i like to wait till it tightens up a little bit same thing on the edges um, everybody does it different but uh shiloh's starting to cut our joints in um, we decided we're going to run a border around here it's an eight inch border they're putting eight by eight posts on here so this will give the concrete some relief um, the weight of the this deck that has a roof on it and it'll minimize any cracking in the middle or up against the house if it cracks it'll crack right on that joint plus it looks nice shallows going around through here we're going to cut them every 10 feet and then uh once we get off of this cut straight off this corner right here you see how we already laid out those black sharpie marks right there are our tool joints and we'll cut straight over to the corner right there like i talked about earlier and um we got a sharpie mark here it's really best if you put a, a screw or a nail in there um, personally I like to put them on the back side because you end up losing them on the top or they get in the way especially if you use a screw so uh, or a nail on top I like to put them in this in the face down here but I just used a sharpie I had one on me and we're gonna cut right off the edge of that door frame and then you got another one right here cut right off that wall and then we're gonna cut one more right here and we're gonna tie it in to where this joint runs from the corner across and stop it now with that being said you cannot just leave that so what needs to happen is if you if you joint that to another joint and stop more than likely that tool joint is going to end up wanting to crack down the middle and continue off of that 
So what we'll do is we'll come back tomorrow and we'll plunge cut that saw cut across there. So when this cut here goes to that joint there, it's a cut, it's a deep cut. So it'll kind of split both ways and not continue down the middle. We've had really good success with that. Um, if you crawl your stuff, we do most of our stuff with pole tools. We don't like to slide a lot. We will have to slide this wall, but some people just knee board and hand tool joint everything. If you do that, you can actually put a piece of flashing in there where this tool joint meets that tool joint and it works really good as a divider. You don't have to come back and cut it. But like I said, we, we do a lot of stuff with pole tools and funny trials and stuff like that. But when you have a wall, you can't really help but to, to knee board it. So I always take my time and try and mag that up there the best we can. So when we get out there and knee boards, it's just one pass and that's it. All right, everything is jointed one time. Got our border cut in one time, ran our slicker across it. Um, for some reason down that last panel is a lot drier. We haven't had any sun yet, but um, what we're gonna do is, since it's drier on that last panel down there before it turns into the five foot squares, we're gonna start down there um, and open these joints back up. And I'm gonna cut back through these here and then Shiloh's gonna start, for some reason, this one square is harder and it gets progressively harder that way and then this is back soft, which is weird. Maybe because this is out, not covered. Um, we did not spray this ground this morning because it was 30 degrees uh, and this may have just had more moisture in it, which would be, would be my guess. But anyways, we're gonna cut it with a joiner again and then Shiloh's gonna start on knee boards going down that wall and he's gonna fix the joints as he goes. And then I'm gonna reach out with a funny trial or walking trial, pole trial, whatever you wanna call it. Brittany's gonna go back down these edges. We're gonna slick it off and then get ready to broom. So that's the slicker there for you. Um, this is a really cool tool. Once you get the hang of it, it does a really nice job. Um, it's, it's, you know, three foot and it's hard, rigid, just like a mag. So it fills in any imperfections and low spots and it does not lie or flex like a trial does. So I like to put that on after the bull float personally um, on something like this. And then um, sometimes we'll run a Fresno or a Fresno or a funny trial, but you could tell this was getting tightened up on us right here from the little chatter, but we'll get that out. We'll see how it turns out. This thing right here is probably my favorite tool and I've got a few that are my favorites, but I think this is probably number one. It's a funny trial. Uh, this one in particular is made by Superior. Same people that make Mag Vibe. Scott Brenning, friend of ours, shout out to him. Um, you can see Shiloh is trialing his way off that wall. And I have funny trialed here. I got to mag that line out. But you can see how nice where I just funny trialed. I mean, that, you know, and it's quick work laid down. Really beautiful. Once again, I don't get too close to the joints. We do that by hand, just with a regular steel trial. And I know there's a huge debate that goes across the nation with putting steel on exterior concrete. We won't get into that, but we have not had any issues. We do not burn it in. I have a lot of opinions on that, but mine in general is when you broom this, it opens the pores back up and it's not like you're bluing or burning it in like you would with the uh, power trial. So. Uh, everything's looking nice so far. I think this will probably be our last pass until it's ready to broom. So another thing that I want to point out, if you notice, I hit this square behind Shiloh and I hit this one in front of him. I'm not going to continue on down and get all the way down there because what can happen is you can get discoloration. More so in the summertime, if I hit this down here and it takes him 15 minutes to get down there, that top is going to be darker than what I hit 15 or 20 minutes before him. So uh, it's more so with colored concrete, but it's not as noticeable with plain gray. But just, uh, just something to look out for. You want to work everything at the same time from the far edge, middle, to this edge. And try to hit everything at the same time and not have someone hit the middle and wait forever to do the edges and especially don't hit the edges and wait forever to hit the middle try to do everything work everything at the same time all the way down all right we got everything edged wiped down i 
So I will say this as we're waiting on this to broom it. Um, I made a mistake here, communication error. We were supposed to tool joint off of this corner right here and come all the way down to this screw. Once again, my fault is communication thing, but when I by the time I caught it, this was already tool jointed. And you know, I mean it's alright. It's um we the way we tool jointed and kind of went over off the inside of this rock right here. You see that how it's a little bit over so when it wants to crack on a 45 more likely it's going to catch that um but uh the problem is once you tool joint something like that you're pushing the aggregate down so you have to fill that back with more aggregate if you just think you can put cream in there it's just going to crack wide open because there's no there's no strength in that it's just paste um so instead of filling that up we just left it and the good news is is that is right on every 10 feet and the other side of the coin is it's not really good to to joint right where you're going to put your post because it doesn't allow the concrete to want to crack there it kind of locks it in so the post is going to go right off that corner so in theory it's actually better that that happened um but yeah everything's wiped down good shallow crawled the edges a funny trial Brittany did these edges out here and um everything's smooth and nice Just waiting on it to dry. And this is a pretty simple job for you guys to pour concrete. I mean, there's nothing complex about this at all, but uh, it's just, you know, showing our process and how we do it. One of the things, that, another thing I'd like to point out is I like to pull the plastic as we go. I did not do that, but you can see when it starts to get windy, you get spots that uh, some of the paste flakes off. And so that's tough to broom around. We need to try and get especially that one out of there. But for the most part, it's all good. We don't have much of that. But that's one thing I like to try and pull it as we go. Especially with just broom finished stuff. So we're going to wait and uh, put a broom on this thing soon. All right. It is 142. Got everything broomed. Shallow is stripping. Uh, my prediction was 1 o'clock. But in my defense, I'm a little off. But the water was not hot. It was 50 degrees, and we ordered hot water in our truck, so we were close. But uh, yeah, got everything broomed, broomed this direction, straight forward and back, and then we broomed the border that way. And I mean, pretty nice looking job. So we forgot our sealer. Um, we are actually going to use a water-based water repellent sealer on this, and I may. You can actually do it the same day. I mean, you don't even have to walk on it. You can just spray it out there. It's a cure and seal, but it works really good. It's made by Surf Coat. There's other manufacturers that make it, but uh, we will get this thing sealed up tomorrow and show you how it looks.